Hey everyone, I'm David Aragona, and this is the September 28th edition of Horses to Watch, where we carefully analyze trips from the last week, looking for horses that might have encountered adversity and could be worth betting back when they run back in the future. I'll be honest, I scoured the replays this week at Aqueduct, or Belmont at the Big A, as they're calling it, and uh, I just had trouble finding too many trips that I was really excited about, races where I was sure that a horse was cost a better position. Uh, I really do like to highlight turf races on this show because you typically see some more trips, horses that are cost uh, ground loss on the turns or things like that. I couldn't find too much to talk about in the turf races this past week at Aqueduct, so I'm instead going to focus on three races from an all-dirt day. This was actually last Thursday, September 22nd, when they were off the turf, so all nine races contested over the main track. I'm going to talk about three maiden races from this card and just highlight some horses that I thought were subtly compromised. I'm not super confident that all of these horses are definitely going to be bet backs next time. I just wanted to highlight each of their trips because I think that there were some things going on that are worth discussing. Let's begin with the first race from that Thursday, September 22nd card. It's a maiden special weight event for the two-year-old fillies going six furlongs, and this is one of the off-the-turf races on the card transferred to the main track. Let's break these runners from the gate, and I want to focus on the number four, Will Be Famous. This filly was entered to compete on the turf and stayed in once the race was transferred to the main track. And you can see she breaks alertly here and heads out for the front end. Her rider, Jose Ortiz, showed some decent aggression to be in that position early, but then he lets her back off as some other horses do try to vie for the lead. And she ends up in this position where she's in behind runners, tracking the leaders. And you see right here, he's trying to hold his position, but the filly seems a little bit uncomfortable with kickback and just not wanting to stay inside of runners and she is going to back out here and you can see Jose kind of gets a little scared in there and also just kind of pulls back on the reins and backs her out of that position and from this point forward she really has no chance to make up that ground because this was a race that was run over a sloppy seal track at the beginning of the day there was not much closing going on at all in this race and that is her now wheeling to the far outside at the quarter pole here she's going to pick up a couple runners to ultimately finish fifth in this race but doesn't do a whole lot of running after this I just think losing that position early in the race really cost her any chance that she had but the thing that I really do want to highlight about Will Be Famous is she was entered for turf and I've always gotten the sense that this filly is meant for the turf she's now made three dirt starts so far in her career got a decent speed figure first time out her debut at Saratoga but it looks like she's subtly or she's uh, significantly regressed in each start since then but I don't think that she actually ran that much more poorly in this last race just didn't get the right trip I'll be very interested if Bruce Brown can find a spot to get her on the turf before grass season does end in New York, or there should be opportunities. We still have October and November for her to get a turf race in because she's by will take charge. There's plenty of turf pedigree on the dam side, and I think she's one that could get dismissed at a decent price if she gets on turf next time off of this last out trip on the dirt. Let's move on to a race from the middle of that Thursday, September 22nd card at Aqueduct. This is a New York bred maiden special weight event for the two-year-old Phillies. Let's break these runners from the gate. And this six furlong event was scheduled for the dirt. I want to focus on the number nine, Caribbean Breeze. She is a first-time starter from the Brad Cox stable. Again, Posey Ortiz in the irons for this one. And she just breaks a little bit sluggishly, but watch what happens here. Notice the up and down motion to her stride. She's kind of rocking back and forth. She's carrying her head a little high. That's what we call a horse that's climbing a little bit. She's kind of, you know, looks like she's trying to jump over the kickback that's coming back to her, and she just drops off the screen there. It really seemed like she was a horse that just was not prepared for being in that position with all of these eight runners kicking the dirt back in her face. And she really wanted no part of it backing way out of contention by the time they go around the turn here. You'll briefly see her come back into the shot as we approach the quarter pole. Uh, Jose Ortiz angles her down towards the inside and he's actually asking her for some run as she comes back into the picture here. You can see, gives her a couple cracks of the whip, tries to get her motivated here. And she's going to do a little bit of running at the end of this race. He'll anger her angle her out to the center of the race course and she's going to pass about half the field to ultimately finish fifth in this race again no real threat to the top three finishers she finishes far back i think she's beaten about 14 lengths in fifth but she does do does, does do some running at the end of this race and just given the tendency that she displayed in the early portion of this race not really want to run with the rest of the pack i think that there might be more ability here than it appears she didn't take much money this day going off at eight to one but she does have pedigree to 
to be a decent dirt sprinter. She's a half sister to Let Her Inspire You, who is a multiple New York bred dirt winner, uh, as well as Jamaica Joy, who was a dirt sprint winner. Uh, it's closely bred to those two because those are both by um, either Into Mischief or a progeny of Into Mischief. And Caribbean Breeze is by Mendelssohn, who, of course, is that half-brother to Into Mischief. So I think that there is some uh, uh, aptitude for this filly to move forward in her second start. Just has to get a cleaner break and run a more professional race second time out. Let's be. Let's finish off with the final race from that Thursday, September 22nd card. This was race nine, another off-the-turf affair. This was a maiden claiming $40,000 race going six furlongs on the main track, transferred to the main track from the turf course. Let's break these runners from the gate, and I want to focus on one of those runners that was meant for the turf, the number 10 Divine Wine. And you can see she breaks towards the back of the pack, Hard to really see it on the pan shot. She gets bumped a little bit coming out of the starting gate. And you can see, kind of like the filly just talked about, she's climbing a little bit at the back of the pack. This was her first ever start on the dirt. She'd only made one start prior to this over a year ago during her two-year-old season, all the way back in the summer of her two-year-old season in a turf sprint for Chad Brown. Have been off for a long time since then. Comes back in this maiden claiming event, transferred into the Jorge Abreu bar. And you could see, just didn't really look like she knew what she was doing in the first portion of this race on the dirt, but watch what she does in the final half of this race, because it looks like she starts to figure things out right around here. And this is not a race that fell apart by any means. The winner comes from about fourth place after stalking the pace early. The pace mostly holds together here, but check out Divine Wine as they get into the stretch. She's only passed one runner at this point as they come by the quarter pole, but once Floppy and Pratt gets into her here, just watch her accelerate, lengthen her stride, and she's going to really get pretty close to contention by the end of this race. She actually finishes less than a length out of second place by the time they come onto the wire, and she's rallying inside of horses through that kickback. Just seemed like like she needed to kind of get her, uh, you know, wits about her in the first portion of the race, kind of get, uh, you know, uh, coordinated. But once she found her stride in the final quarter, she was really coming on and was the only horse that was making that kind of run. Got a decent 57 buyer for the level this day. And I'll be interested to see what they do with her in her next start if they decide to go back to the turf or if they run her on dirt again, because she's got a pedigree that can really go either way. She's buying to mischief. The dad was an Australian turf horse, actually one that was group three placed down under. So it'll be interesting to see which one, which side she takes after more, because she didn't do a whole lot of running in her turf debut. Showed many more signs of life in the second start, albeit against a softer field. So like I said at the top of the show, I'm not that confident that all of these horses are definitely going to be bet backs. A few of them were competing in off the turf races, but I think we could see a few of these runners get back to their preferred surfaces, especially that first one I highlighted will be famous, who could be in a turf race next time. I just think all of these horses are relatively lightly raced runners that could do better with these experiences from last Thursday's card under their belts. If you want to follow these horses or any others in subsequent starts, you can add them to your horse watch on drf.com. Just add them to your list and you'll get email notifications when these horses run back in the future. So thanks for tuning in this week and make sure to catch future episodes of Horses to Watch on upcoming Wednesdays.